So, if you go to the stock market and look at the price of, of say a favorite company's share. So, what you would observe is the following. So, if the horizontal axis is the time axis and this is the price axis, it tells you what is the price. Then you will see starting from a certain time price you will see some zigzagging motions like this. So, up to you observe it up to time t and you observe this zigzagging motion. This is of course, random nobody knows what is the next price is. So, if a particular scenario involve evolves, you have a particular path, this is called a sample path. So, if another scenario evolves, if another scenario evolves, there would be another path. For example, it could be like this, the stock price is going down, 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 down and you are in a bad shape and then it again climbs up and again falls down, down, down and again then again climbs up. So, under a different scenario, it has a different path. So, it is sample path 1, it is sample path 2. So, it is what type of scenario? one evolves. Now, of course, you can ask me what is this term scenario that you are talking about? What is the meaning of this goddamn word scenario? We will come to this very soon, but how do I model such zigzagging paths? What way to model it? Is there any mathematical way to say that a st or can I construct a stochastic process whose sample paths are represented in this form? Let us do to do that, we need to study what is called Brownian motion. Brownian motion is a type of stochastic process which will help us to model stock prices at the end. So, the whole term Brownian motion comes from the name of Robert Brown, who first studied the movement of pollen grains in water and he found that they were having very zigzag haphazard movements. But it is not so immediately apparent that you can just start writing about this particular stochastic process. We need to have some more idea and built upon some simpler stochastic process. So, this will all begin, we will begin by introducing what is called symmetric random walks, where there are only two possibilities. You can either go up or down, that is like a, like a coin toss head or tail and that here I can have infinite such possibilities, infinite such sample paths here of course and there it could be infinite possibilities also. Here also we will have infinite possibilities, but generated out of only two possibilities. So, symmetric random walk so you take a fair coin and then you keep on repeatedly tossing it. So, it is a, so this is a stochastic process which I will write in short from now on as stochastic process generated by repeated tosses of a fair coin. Okay. And if you look at it very carefully, what I mean by this? So, you start tossing the coin. So, repeatedly you are tossing omega 1, omega 2. So, omega 1 is either head or tail, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, 5 and so and so forth. Suppose you have here head, head, tail, tail, head, 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 tail, tail, tail and it goes on. So, this is one particular scenario that has evolved. You could have another scenario say omega bar which is consisting of say omega 1 bar, omega 2 bar, omega 3 bar, omega 4 bar, omega 5 bar, it could be something like this. 
tail tail head 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 tail 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 head 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 and so on. So, these two are different scenarios and these two each would generate two different sample paths. So, so how do we generate this symmetric random walk? So, these these are two different scenarios. two different scenarios. Now, construct a random variable x j x j which takes the value 1 if j is equal sorry if omega j is equal to head and takes the value minus 1 if omega j is equal to tail if tail appears and 1 if head appears. So, now you define a stochastic process. So, define a new stochastic process. m k k equal to 0 to infinity or let us we can in not bother we can also fix it up to some time it could be some time capital say k is say 25 something or here 25 or 30 whatever but in general it is all right to take plus infinity just a sequence where m k is given as follows each of these m k's are calculated by starting from m 0 equal to 0, m k is equal to j is the sum from j from 1 to k to x j. So, let us see what would happen if one particular scenario like this evolves. Let us see then what is the sample path of this. This symmetric random walk is also called a drunkard's walk. somebody has had a good drink and he has become drunk and if you look at it, his walk. So, if a drunkard would walk like this if I am here. So, I start from here then I can just go like this and he goes like this just it is just or like this you know I am coming here and then I am going there something like this. So, this sort of thing you will immediately observe as I start say checking out with this scenario. So, here is my k and here is my m k value. Now, the first one here has turned out to be head. So, m 0 is 0. Let me write minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Minus 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And of course, that here also you have to have k values which is 1 or maybe not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so on and so forth. So, m 0 is 0, this is 0, is 0. Now, you toss a coin and you have head, omega 1 is head. So, you go up by plus 1 because x j will take plus 1 because m 1 is just x 1. So, here is the value of m 1, this is your m 1. So, you join m 0 and m 1 by line. So, 0 is m 0. And then you again add head. So, m 2 is again 1. I am looking at this scenario. m 2 is you go by 1. So, it is 1 plus 1 now 2. So, m 2 is 2. So, you join again by this line, but m 3 is tail. So, you will drop by 1. So, it will be minus 1. So, you will again drop back to the point 1. So, this is your m 2 and this is m 3. And then 
omega 4 is again tail. So, it drop back to 0 again you minus 1 sub, subtract. So, this is your m 4 is 0. Again then you have head for omega 5 say. So, here you have omega 6, omega 7, omega 8, omega 9. So, for m 4 you are tail you have come to 0 again then it goes up again for m it goes to plus 1 again. So, this is your m 5 again it goes up to 2 m 6, but then you have tail again. So, m 7 comes down to plus 1 again you have tail. So, m 8 comes down to 0 because you are adding up everything at every step you are going up or down. So, you add, add add up in this fashion and you move like this. So, m 8 I have here omega 8 is again omega 9 is tail. So, again I have to go down. So, I go down by so from 0 I will have to go down by 1. So, I will go come to minus 1. So, this will be our m 9 and if suppose m 10 omega 10 is head then it will again go up to 0 at, at the 10th place because it will again add 1. So, it will become your m 10. So, what do you see that the symmetric random walk is providing me some zigzag looking curve which might tempt you to think that possibly these two have some relationships. They are, they do have some relationships and we will talk about that slightly down the talk. But let me tell you some more properties of this symmetric random walk m k. So, here is my stochastic process and this stochastic process is called the symmetric random walk. Of course, we are not mentioning but underlying we are always taking some probability space and all of, all of those things. So, now we will these uh, random this particular random process or stochastic process has independent increments. What do I mean by the fact that they have independent increments? What I mean is the following. So, if you have you take certain numbers sometime so say some k m then you have the following you have m k 1 that is once you consider non overlapping intervals then this difference is independent because they depend on independent coin tosses because coin tosses are independent, when the coin toss at the second level really does not the second outcome does not really depend on the first outcome right when you do a repeat at coin toss sorry k 2 minus k 1 m k m minus m k m minus 1. So, these random variables are independent all of these random variables these form a set of independent random variables. So, that is once this happens this is when we say that it has independent increments and this actually has independent increment these are independent because their difference which really do, does not depend on the coin tosses here does not depend on the coin tosses here and here and so you have in independent increment. So, this, this change that you see here does not depend on the change that you see in this interval or the change that you see in this interval right. So, you can still observe that it is like a drunkard walk. So, drunkard walks like this goes down goes up in George Gamow's famous book 1, 2, 3 infinity this has been described in a very, very nice way. How do you see here? my success probability 
this, this occurs with probability half and this also occurs with probability half. So, if you observe that exponential of x j sorry expectation of x j is 0, because it is 1 into half plus minus 1 into half. Variance of x j So, what is variance of x j? Exponential x minus x j whole square, which is 0. So, it is 1 into half plus minus 1 whole square, minus 1 minus 0 whole square plus 1 into half, which is 1. Once you have this information, this is true for all j, it is immediate that exponential m of k i plus 1 minus m of k i is 0 and the variance of m of k i plus 1 minus m of k i is equal to I will leave you leave it to you to calculate this stuff. Our second property about this random walk is to show that this is also a martingale. You see martingale thing comes up. So, symmetric random walk is a discrete martingale. So, you can easily prove that it is a martingale. So, you take any k strictly less than l and look at the expectation of m l conditioned on the filtration the, the sigma algebra f k which is a part of the filtration. Okay. So, you can write this as m l minus m k plus m k so this can be this can be summed up just like expectation can be some conditional expectation this random variable can be decomposed into two parts which you can actually prove which will be a part of your exercise but we are just using this fact here so, maybe I should rub the board a bit. Now, let us look at the first part. Since L is strictly bigger than k, this increment m L minus m k is independent of f k. f k does not have information of anything which is beyond the time k. So, here by our one of our rules for conditional expectation, this is nothing but m l minus m k and here at time k everything about m k is known. So, f k contains all information about m k. So, the, we have we the first law was taking out what is known. I can write this m k as m k dot 1 where 1 is the constant random variable 1. So, whatever be the scenario it will just give you the value 1. So, I can write this as m k 
So, I write this as mk dot 1, so it will, so I can take out what is known 1 dot fk. Of course, 1 is a constant and a variable, it does not really depend on, is independent of fk. So, it will be e of 1, which is a constant, which will be just 1. So, because the, everything will be 1, so the sum of the probabilities will sum up to 1. So, the expectation will be just the number. So, this again is 0, which we already know plus m k into 1, which is m k. And so, this shows that m l is a this symmetric random work, this thing forms a discrete Mottingel. Of course, f k is m k has to be adapted to this filtration, that is the basic definition of Mottingel. There is another notion which crops up in the study of these sort of processes is called the quadratic variation. So, you essentially look at path by path, you look at how much the random variable values are varying between one end of the path to other end of the path, that is between k 1s and k 2 say, how much it is varying, but do not take just the sum of those variations. The, they may just be 0, so you just would not get any information, but take the square of the variation. It is like a mean square error type thing. So, we again, we take here and introduce the notion of a quadratic variation. So, the quadratic variation is expressed in the following way. M M K is defined as summation J equal to 1 to K M J minus M J minus one whole square is equal to and this if you look m j minus m j minus 1 whole square, this value is always 1. If you sum them up, what will be left here? x j would be left here, the x j. If you take the difference between m j and m j minus 1, you will have the value x j left, x j is either plus 1 or minus 1. So, the squaring will always give you 1. So, this expression of the square errors basically or the square changes now, along every path of a given sample I can do the take the changes, but it will whatever be your path independent of the path it, it turns out to be k. If you do it up to the kth level it turns out to be the k independent of the path that you have taken which is very very interesting it does not happen for suppose you want to compute the variance. So, m m k is actually variance of m of k, think about it, how it is possible. But you see to compute this, I really do not need to bother about the path, but to take variance of m k, we are essentially averaging over all the paths. So, this is a difference. Now, how do I, can I do something with this process? can I increase the jiggling of this process a bit, this symmetric random walk a bit and generate some sort of an approximation of a Brownian motion, uh, generate this sort of zigzagging that we had just seen in the beginning when I had drawn the picture of the stock price that this sort of zigzagging. Can we generate this sort of zigzagging, this sort of zigzagging can be generated by using the symmetric random walk. And that leads to what is called a scaled symmetric random walk. We will not go too much of details into it because that might uh, you know take you off track and you might feel a little bit of uncommon discomfort for those who are not so very comfortable with very complicated analysis. So, what we are going to now show by this scaled random walk is that
what we are going to show by scale random walk is that we can construct an nth level approximation for the Brownian motion. Let us construct an nth level approximation. So, if you are zigzagging by say plus 1 and minus 1, I might zigzag by 1 by 10 then minus 1 by 10. So, I will decrease my zigzagging steps, but increases my time size, right. So, we construct the scaled symmetric random walk, which is the nth level approximation of a Brownian motion, nth level approximation of a Brownian motion. So, all these are stochastic processes. So, this is a discrete stochastic process from which I am trying to go to a continuous stochastic process. I de define it like this. You see, if I do not have n t to be an integer, I cannot define this. So, here my t is a t say t between t starts from 0 and say it is up to t or even t goes to infinity. So, basically for me here this t is just greater than equal to 0. So, I am, so using the discrete thing, I am trying to con construct a continuous stochastic process. But I have to be aware that if I really want to use it, so at the nth level approximation, this m n t has to be, this n t has to be integer if I want to actually compute this. Otherwise, m is a discrete thing, it is, it is computed only at integer points, you cannot compute it at non-integer points. So, what happens if it is not computed at, in, if, if you n t does not turn out to be an integer? So, basically what you are considering for n very large at various time points n t would be an integer and you are actually competing at out of n t. So, if n t is not an integer, take the t for which n t is not an integer, then take some u and take some s which is nearest to t such that n s and n u these are integers and then compute the value of w n u and w n s and then make an interpolation linear interpolation to approximate the value of w n t and that is how you can actually do you can generate it in a machine by taking a sample. Say you can take a you can take a sample of say So, you can do the coin tossing 400 times with uh, 1 by 10th, 1 by whatever you are, you can toss a coin 400 times with probability of half of going, you go 1 by 10th if it is h and you go minus 1 by 10th if it is tail. So, you decrease your movement. So, you actually increase the zigzag by decreasing the movement. And at every time, you have to observe that your m n t n t has to be an integer. Once you do that, you will find all the properties that you had of for here is in here, provided that this n, n into t is an integer. So, you first do it only for n into t is an integer, whatever is left you do that interpolation and you will see you will, you will start getting a zigzagging curve, much zigzag than the symmetric random walk itself. Actually, it can be shown that as n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity, this w n t converges, this random variable converges almost surely Sorry, not in almost surely, I am making a mistake. Converges in distribution, rather, or con converges in distribution. Okay, these are terms which I have not mentioned, just forget them for a while. Converges in some sense, W and T 
as n becomes infinity this this stochastic processes gets changed into the what is called a brownian motion so this is what we are going to talk about in the next class So tomorrow we are going to study the properties of Brownian motion for the next two classes. So the last tomorrow's class would be the last for the second week of the course. In the third week we start recontinuing our discussion Brownian motion and then go to understand stochastic integrals or Ito integrals and doing Ito calculus which is the which is the foundation of any uh, financial mathematics that you do. Thank you very much.